Okay, enough with the dramatics. This is what our bathroom looked like before I decided to do this little facelift for it. It's a really difficult space to work with. It's very small. There's essentially no natural light that ever comes into this place. So I wanted to make this area feel a little bit more refreshed and just give it a little bit of a facelift for the new year. The first thing I'm going to be doing is staining this old piece of wood I rescued from my grandmother's birthday party. <laughs> I literally pulled this out of the bonfire because it had paint on one side and I fell in love and that's just the kind of crazy that I am. So I'm just staining the back of it and the exposed edges of wood that are on the front. Any of the stain that transfers onto the paint I'm just wiping away with a damp paper towel. And then moving on to this decorative crate I found at Michael's. It's not the full size version of crates that I used in my DIY filing cabinet video. It's like the mini version of that. And I thought this would serve multiple purposes in the bathroom on top of the toilet to hold toilet paper. So I'm just staining that all over with the same exact stain. And this one is a little bit trickier because there are more nooks and crannies that you'll have to get. But other than that, it's very straightforward. Just go ahead and stain it with your foam brush. And once that dries, you can decide to seal it with some polyacrylic like we're gonna be doing to the wood sign or leave it bare. For the lettering on my sign, I'm gonna be using a lesson from a blog called Llamas Love Lettering. I actually found her blog and herself through YouTube and her name is Cindy. I will link her channel down below. She is great with lettering techniques and I love the way she uses lettering. So I took a page from her book quite literally and printed out lesson number 10 from her blog and it used the font directly from that and just freehanded it onto my sign. There are multiple ways that you can do this. You can print out bigger versions so that you can make stencils out of them or you can find stencils on Pinterest. For me, this is the easiest way to do it. I've been doing this for years so it may not work for you. I just used a regular mechanical pencil and then a jumbo eraser to erase any of the unwanted lines or mistakes that I made. I think I did misspell it a couple times or I completely missed a letter. I do that a lot when I'm like intensely focusing on drawing but that's okay because that's the whole point of doing this with pencil first. The worst thing that you could do is start with paint first because you can always take away pencil and you can't necessarily take away paint especially on a piece like this where I don't have that original paint. I don't have anything that would fix it apart from sanding it off or trying to sand it off which may ruin the entire piece of wood. So after fixing a few boo-boos and making sure I was happy with my letter placement, I went over each letter a little bit more thickly and then used my eraser to erase any of the big mistakes or any of the lines that I definitely didn't want there and then I was able to start with the paint. Whenever I'm doing lettering like this, I like to outline my letters before I go in with paint. This is really just personal preference. You don't have to do this. I find that it makes painting letters a lot easier because it's just like coloring within the lines. And it doesn't necessarily matter what marker you use because you may get paint over it. So this helps me save a lot of time when it comes to painting because then I'm not worried about my lines. I'm just worried about coloring in my lines. And like I said, you can use a Sharpie. You can use any type of marker that will help you basically just keep your paint in check. Once you've outlined everything or once you're ready to start painting, you can use a matte black paint to fill in your letters. I use an acrylic paint. I don't believe it matters if you use acrylic or oil-based paints. I just have a lot of acrylic paint in my craft storage, so it is really just up to you. I have used a glossy black paint to do letters before and it is a pain in the butt. You can see all of the stroke marks. You can see all of your mistakes. So ever since then, I've been using a matte black and it dries really smoothly. You can't really tell that you painted it on. And in this instance, that's exactly what I want. I want it to look like this was always part of the wood sign. So here is my finished sign. I love the letter lessons from Llamas Love Lettering. It makes everything so much more simple and I was able to just draw this on and be done. I went through and erased all of my pencil marks, made sure everything was gone so you couldn't see it at all. And then I hit it with my sanding block just to kind of rough it up a little bit and make it look less new. I didn't want it to look super fresh and like I just purchased it or just made it. I want it to look like it's aged a little bit with that wood. Of course, after you sand anything, always wipe it down with a damp cloth to get all of the dust off of there and let it air dry and then you can move on to your poly. I actually had some polyacrylic left over from staining my dining table so I just used that on this wood sign now. <laughs> Do not follow my lead and be as lazy as I was. I didn't feel like ruining a bowl. I don't have any plastic cups, so I just poured it directly onto the face of my project. I don't recommend this ever, <laughs> but you do what you gotta do. So I just made sure to completely cover the front and get into the sides. After that dries, you're gonna wanna cover the back as well and any of the other pieces of exposed wood. To hang this decorative sign, I actually picked up some hooks from Michaels. I don't remember the exact name of them because I threw away the packaging, but they're just generic hangers that you can find near the command strips. So once I hammer those into the back, it's ready to be hung up. 
Okay, no need for a scary intro. <laughs> Here is my bathroom after our little makeover. Hi! Now, I moved this in. This used to be in our hallway. I actually got this online. It's a little wax warmer. And it says, home sweet home. And here's the crate that you saw me make. Right now, I'm using it to hold the toilet paper just because we had a toilet paper stand. It was sitting over there next to that beautiful thing. Um, and I just, I yeah, it wasn't working. So. I put it over here, and then we of course have Febreze because of other stuff. Um, <laughs> so, and then here is the new shower curtain. Now, I mentioned before, it's really frustrating because the shower curtain, which is meant to give you more space, juts out super, super far. So our shower curtain kind of sits a little funky, but um, it's just this really pretty ruffled one that we got off of Amazon. Super, super affordable, so that was really nice, and I just think just with that alone, it's just so much more open. You may not think that that's like a big change, but to me it is. <laughs> so, so let's see, inside the shower curtain is our get naked sign. Then we also updated and got a better shower head, which is super, super nice. Um, the other one just kind of like sprayed you really harshly. So this is nice because it evens out the water. And there's the sign. You can't really tell it's there unless the shower curtain is open. I like the way it turned out. So, and on this wall, we still have our little sign that we got from Hobby Lobby. I kind of debated moving it from this wall to this wall. I actually have those few items. I stained, this is an old window frame. I stained it for the sake of this video and then put it up on this wall and did not like it. So um, right now it's just empty. I actually got a vintage window from my grandmother, which I think will be going here. And it's a little, it's similar to this size. Um, just a little taller, so I think it fits the space a lot better. It's still at my parents' house right now, so I will be adding that as soon as I can. <laughs> um, but I really wanted to show you guys how simple it is to give your bathroom a facelift with really just a few things. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of like fast video, bathroom facelift, not really makeover, bathroom tour. <laughs> so don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will see you guys later. Bye! She also got me the Brett Brow Kick Some Arch Brow Pencil. That's what it says. I threw away the packaging. I apologize. Um,